Hey, this is a part of being uh, fiscally conservative for a number of years. The University of Nebraska is a, a top 10 fiscal program that what happens in Husker athletics does not impact taxpayers. Uh, it's independent of that. Sometimes that's forgotten. We're one of the few university sports programs that has that privilege. Uh, being part of the Big Ten, which was a benefit we knew would show up uh, as Big Ten media rights, the other media rights that we just did with Playfly, give us some flexibility. And what I think fans want to know most importantly is that University of Nebraska was committed, committed to changing the way our outcomes were happening. And picking Coach Rule as our top choice is a commitment to that. When did you first meet Coach Rule, talk to Coach Rule in this process? Yeah. So uh, I met Matt Rule all the way back in 2016. Country, uh, we played Notre Dame every year. Navy in 2016 uh, had just lost Keenan Reynolds, the top rushing quarterback in the nation, and yet we were nationally ranked. We beat number five Houston uh, in the fall. We beat Notre Dame for only the fourth time in 54 years that year, and we won the American Athletic Conference West. We got the privilege of playing Temple, the team that we'd beaten for years, and Matt Rule shows up creates this unbelievable defense. Navy goes into that game a two touchdown favorite. We lost by three touchdowns. Uh, and I remember congratulating Matt at the end of that game and saying, you've done one heck of a job. So I have followed Matt throughout uh, all of that time. Uh, and of course, Matt and I, like a lot of these coaches, have uh, maintained some level of relationship. So as, uh, as the search went on, uh, I had a, a chance to interact with Matt, uh, mostly through phone and text. Uh, but uh, certainly we knew each other. And uh, as he said, relationships, as always, they matter. What is it about Matt Rule that embodies what this going to do football You know, I know you all listened to him today. Uh, I was blown away, as I hope you all were. The man is authentic. He is sincere. He's going to bring a culture of toughness to this program. We are going to win the line of scrimmage, which will lead to winning football games. What impressed you about the search? Is it mm -hmm. Well, I, I can't compliment Trev Alberts enough. And uh, when we talk about alignment from Trev to the chancellor, to the president, to our board of regents, all of us were in agreement in the process. And the process involved analytics, not leaving any possibilities out there. Trev interviewed, as he's mentioned, many, many coaches. Uh, and what I will say is Matt Rule was our number one choice. We had many other good choices um, and uh, from Chancellor Ronnie Green to myself to the Board of Regents, everybody was in support. What was your level of involvement? I'm sorry, I didn't ask this. I just walked in. What was your level of involvement? Well, I was kept appraised uh, by Trev. Uh, it's not my full um, interview process to, to own. That's Trev's. But at the end of the day, the signature, the approval for the contract goes to the president of the university. So to make it simple, I own the bottom line of the contract. Yeah. But I also want you all to know that I do this with respect to the Board of Regents. They give me that authority through their policy, and every Board of Regents was kept apprised of who was in the hunt, when the contract was first still being worked, when it fell apart, and when it got put back together, and when we signed. And it had full 100% approval of all eight publicly elected Board of Regents. Did the nine million number give you any pause at all? Of course, like everybody, that's a lot of money. But you know, this is what uh, coaches are bringing in these days. And uh, if you want the best, you're gonna have to be willing to uh, you know, put up that kind of money. We're very fortunate that we have a sports program here that can handle that without having to turn that over to the fans, without having to turn that over to the taxpayers. You know, this brand will allow us to do that. And you know, we paid attention to every level of detail in the contract. That's why this was hard. You know, and, and, and building these type of contracts does not happen overnight. It took, it took a number of days. There was a point in time that fell apart. Well, you know, nothing is first try. You know, there's negotiations. So I'll just say that it went back and forth a number of times. The 90%, 90% eight-year guarantee. Um, you know, it, there's some fans that go, hey, we've been down this route before paying coaches yeah. that, don't, that aren't coaching for us. So I'll just say this, you know, we're not, you know, you know we know there's big money here but this coach is gonna be coaching here for a number of years. So if you just assume for a second that we're gonna be with this coach for the next four years to watch that success build out, you have to look at the contract on what the backside of that is. And I'll tell you the exposure to the university is believe it or not, that, not that much different than what we had with Scott Frost. Uh, so we're thinking through all that. Uh, we'll have more details of that as the contract comes out, but our exposure 
uh, on some potential payout, should things really not go right, uh, will not be that much different than Coach Frost. And, and that's that's something we had to pay attention to. President Carter, did you get a shot, a chance to, to meet Matt and Julie when they came into, into Lincoln the first time? Uh, yes, and uh, you know it was uh, very brief because uh, Coach Rule and I have known each other for a number of years. Mm -hmm. So it was really more of a of a reunion, a uh, quick hello. Uh, we we reminisced about the uh, the Navy Temple game in 2016, uh, and then uh, more of the the real details of the, uh, the you know the, the process with Trev was happening between those two. But uh, Matt and I stayed in touch throughout and. Uh, I just want him to know how much we believed him. You mean here or at, Tre at Trev's, Trev's house? Or yeah. Trev's house? <laughs> you, that, that relationship that you guys had, um, strictly from that AAC, those AAC days, and, and uh, from your time at, at Navy and, and Temple, and, I mean, is it normal for the coach to meet the you know administrator from so the american school? athletic conference and a lot of other conferences do that at the end of the year they do a retreat mm -hmm. so the presidents and the coaches and spouses all met uh, we would go down to florida we talk about the conference no, the conference was new so i had the opportunity to get to know all these coaches okay. uh, they all showed up and some you know i still remember meeting tommy tuberville and spending mm -hmm. some time with him and then luke fickle and then scott frost and then uh you know certainly matt rule and uh you know, our own coach uh, at Navy, Ken Niamatololo. I mean, they all these coaches know each other well, uh, and it's a bond that they have. And you get to know who is what, who has what reputation. Uh, so that relationship was started well before I even came here to, to Nebraska. So then when that when that name came up from Trev, I'm sure your, your eyebrows raised. Well, like a lot of coaches, you know, we kept all <laughs> options open. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, relationships still matter. So just so we understand this correctly, more of the money is backloaded for this contract? No, actually more of it's front-loaded. Okay. Yeah, yeah because of the, the, the way the Panthers, uh, you know, lack of participation in the contract, at least on the front side, there's probably still some more of that negotiation to happen, but uh, we will have less exposure at the back end than the front. Okay, so the university's exposure is not $72 million? No. No, no it isn't. Well, again, I'm not going to get into the details of the contract here on a microphone. We're, yeah, that, that'll all get released. You'll be able to see it. Thank you. I didn't know you and I talked about it earlier, though. Was there any sense of doubt along the way that this was going to get done throughout the process? Oh, there's always doubt. Mm -hmm. It's complicated. Uh, it's complicated whether you're bringing a coach from another program or from a coach that's no longer uh, actively employed or even somebody that was let go by an NFL team. So, yeah, these things are uh, not easy to do. Uh, it's a great success story for uh, our legal team that was involved, uh, for Trev's team, the staffs, uh, and the alignment that we had from the regents to the president to the chancellor down to the athletic director. President Perry, you know you said regents, chancellor, everybody, Trev working together. Yeah. What's the dynamic like uh, between all of you to discuss and talk about potential candidates as they, as they went through the interview process? Cordial, understanding, uh, wanting to make sure that we got the right candidate, the best candidate. And that's what I think most people were interested in. There was, a, there was a, a period of time in, I believe, early November when um, there was a lot of uh, talk in the community about uh, the regions or some of the regions getting together with Trev to uh, discuss, have an update. You know, was it a meeting? Wasn't it a meeting? That kind of thing. None of that happened. None of that happened? None of that happened. <laughs> okay. It's all speculative. And I think it's a confusion because some universities, the Board of Regents have a, uh, a meeting and a vote authority. Mm -hmm. uh, the way our policies are written, the Board of Regents gives that policy to the university system president to sign the contract. It'll be presented to them as a uh, as a, an item of note, but not for a specific vote. Mm -hmm. So uh, the way I operate with our Board of Regents, there's a no surprise policy, especially on big items like this. So I kept them informed all along the way uh, and uh, individually. So there was never a meeting. We have Public Meetings Act, so we can't bring everybody together without notification or notification on what we're voting for. So like everything we do, we're very transparent, uh, except in this process, which we were able to do this very carefully without having leaks or other outside influence. So to be clear, there w could, could Trev update some of the regents along the way, like not without if a I had asked, meeting? If I had asked him to or if they specifically called him, but uh, the way it worked is the regents trust me, okay. so they stayed in touch with me. Okay, so it came from you. Right.